Hey, what is going on everybody? So in this power packed video, I'm going to teach you how to create a lead generation campaign to advertise your house cleaning business. And now this is under the assumption that you already have a business page created on Facebook for your business. If you have a personal page, you need to change that right away. But I'm not going to explain in this video how to do that. I'm just going to assume that you already have a business page created. So if that applies to you, what you're going to do next is click this drop down arrow, go over here where it says manage ads, or it might say create ads for you. You're going to want to click that and it's going to bring you to the scary looking interface. Don't worry about this. I'll explain everything in a minute. But once you're here, you're just going to click this create button over here. And now when you're creating your campaign, Facebook breaks up everything into three levels. So as you can see, the first one over here is campaign. The second one is ad set. And then the third one is ad. So what people actually see when they're scrolling on Facebook. So we're starting at the campaign level and now you have what's called different marketing objectives. So for example, brand awareness, pretty self-explanatory reach traffic. This is basically, you know, let's shove this ad into as many eyeballs as we can. Something like engagement would be if you're trying to get people to interact with your ad specifically. So for example, you might have an offer. Hey, Houston, Texas, we're offering three free deep cleans to the first 10 people that comment on this ad, tag three of their friends and share it. Enter for your chance to win below. So that would be an example of an engagement type campaign. And based on the history of each user who's on Facebook, Facebook actually has abilities to track what people are more likely to do. So it will shove that ad to people that match that, that you know, similarity. But whatever, that was a little tangent. What we're gonna do is lead generation. And this is built in within Facebook's lead form, which I'll show you making everything super convenient. So this is a really nice campaign to choose. But campaign name, uh, just for the sake of simplicity, you're probably just gonna name it something like your cleaning business name, and then maybe uh, lead gen. Create split test and campaign budget optimization. These are, these are you know, good tactics to use, especially split testing, which I do use for a lot of my ads. But these are more advanced tactics, and I'm not going to really talk about them in this video. So just leave them off. It's totally cool. Um, you can hit continue. And now, as you can see, we're finished at the campaign level, and now we're brought over here to the ad set level. So here's where we really start targeting who our ideal audience is. And you can name this ad set, um, you know, audience whatever you really want, you know, lead gen prospects or something like that. Um, so just make sure you're, you have the correct Facebook page set up for this, which you most likely will. Now over here, you have two options, create new audience or use a saved audience. And if you wanted to, let's say, create a new audience, what that would simply mean is if you have a customer file of either all the website visitors you've had in the past, you know, X amount of days, which you would need a Facebook pixel to track all that information anyway. Um, or if you have a customer list, let's say you have an email list on MailChimp, for example, of all of your clients, and you wanted to upload all these people into the system so that you could re-advertise to these individuals or create what's called the lookalike audience, which basically Facebook pulls all the similarities from that group of people and finds more and more like-minded individuals to advertise to. And this could actually be a quite profitable way of advertising. But like I said, that's, that's again, a little bit more advanced. So we're not gonna worry about that too much. Let's just, let's just skip that for now. Um, don't worry about that if that doesn't apply to you. But what you will wanna do is go over here. So this is where the fun starts because now you could start targeting people within a specific location. And for you, you're just gonna enter in wherever the address is of where you guys work out of. I just made up that address. And now you could select the radius of how many miles uh, within a radius you guys are willing to accept work in. So let's say it's 25 miles. And another thing you guys can do is enter in specific counties that you guys accept work in. So let's say, let's just enter in, let's do Westchester County and then maybe Fairfield County. So this is just a really good way to expand your targeted reach. And now, right now we're under the assumption that we're gonna be running a daily budget of $20 for this campaign. So what Facebook does is it says, okay, for 
for within a specific geographical location that you selected, there's about 1.8 million people, not too shabby, but an estimated reach within this $20 a day, we can expect somewhere around 369 to 1.1 thousand people to see this ad within one day. So that's a pretty good result. And the reason why, sorry, let me scroll back in. So I'm gonna talk about why the reason why you actually want to start at a lower ad budget, something like $5 or $10 a day is really important. But for now, let's just finish the targeting. So for the next, for the age range, um, gender, maybe detail targeting based on interest, what I want you guys to do is think about all of your past clients. Do they tend to be within a specific age range? You know, are most of them, you know, over the age of 35? Do they tend to be, you know, mostly male or female? Are 70% of your clientele uh, females? Are they pretty split 50-50? Do they tend to be pet owners? You know, the reason why I want you guys to ask these questions, and actually it's helpful if you write it down in notes over here, is because this is what's gonna help you with your detailed targeting. You know, you guys don't want to burn through your money and show this ad to people that won't, you know, convert. Um, because that's just, like I said, it's going to burn through your money if you're showing this ad to a bunch of 18-year-olds, yet you've never had an 18-year-old's client in your life. So select all of them that apply, obviously. All right, sorry about that. I had to charge my computer really quick. So you're going to select the specific age range that applies to your past clientele. Like I said, maybe it tends to be... Um, heavily leaned on one gender versus the other. If not though, just keep it at all. And the detail targeting, you know, this would apply more if you live within a really specific, like let's say densely populated city where you just have so many prospects that you really want to narrow down. And let's say you're in like Manhattan, for example, and most of your clients tend to be pet owners. Um, then you could actually target those people specifically and, you know, include other interests maybe. But you know, when in doubt, just leave this blank. This is only just to refine your audience super well if you wanna make sure that you get the most qualified prospects as possible. So that's pretty much that. You can save this audience, uh, name it, you know, whatever you'd like. And then next is placements. So this is where Facebook's gonna to show to place your ad. And it gives you the automatic, um, automatic placements is what it pre-fills. But I want you guys to actually click edit placements because Facebook, the automatic placements is it has you basically shown everywhere on the platform. And Facebook does this because it wants you to spend a lot of money um, within their platform right away. And this is not what you want to do. What you want to do is keep it basically just on the feeds. So Facebook news feed, Instagram feed, I would only recommend if you actually have an Instagram. Um, otherwise, I would uncheck that. Facebook marketplace, this is interesting. So there's actually been some recent studies that show that excuse me, when people are on Facebook Marketplace, because they're already in that mindset of purchasing something, there actually is a pretty good rate that they'll likely interact with your ad. Um, so you can actually keep that checked. So uncheck Instagram Explorer, like I said, stories, uncheck, at least for this one, yeah, and stream, uncheck that. Yeah, so basically, just Facebook Newsfeed and Facebook Marketplace are the two highest converting areas for your ad to be shown. So once you have those selected, so here's how the budget and scheduling works. What I would recommend is keep it at a daily budget. Don't worry about this. Just keep it at a daily budget. And like I said, start small. I would even recommend either $5 a day or $10 a day. And I, I do, I run my ads continuously. I don't set a start or an end date. You can if you want, but you know, it's just not really necessary. But the reason why I start my ad budget slow is because let's say we run this ad for three days at a budget of about you know five dollars or ten dollars so it's we're gonna have spent somewhere between 15 to 30 dollars and this will give me a decent idea of if people are clicking on my ad you know is my ad converting well um, am i getting any leads maybe i'm getting a lot of clicks but not so many leads or i am getting a lot of leads so i'll know my ads performing right away but the reason why you want to start off small it, rather than doing something like 50 dollars a day or even a hundred dollars a day which i have seen some people do is because let's say something in your campaign is totally screwed up, you know, you have the wrong targeting feature or something like that, and you have $100 a day for your ad because you're just so sure that it's gonna perform well, but it doesn't, well, guess what? You just blew through $300. So Facebook advertising really just comes into daily monitoring and making sure that your campaign is performing properly. 
And once you see the proof that it is, then you can look to scale it up and up. So that's a little tangent, but let's continue. And as you can see, we're about to finish. We're over at the ad level now. So this is where what people are actually going to see once they're on Facebook. So you have an option. If you have multiple images that you want to show within this ad, you could select the carousel. In this option, though, or sorry, in this example, we're just going to use a single image or video. So you're going to scroll over here, go to edit image, change image, and you can upload um, whatever image you guys are going to be using. In this case, I'm just going to use this as an example, this floor clean over here. And now over here, it will show you, based on the feed examples that you guys selected of where you want your ad to be placed, it will show you what it looks like in all of them. Now, I always give my number one priority to mobile newsfeed because 80 to 90% of the browsing that goes on internet today are on people's smartphones. So I always want to keep the mobile newsfeed first priority, see how it looks on mobile. This photo could obviously be cropped a little bit better, but I do recommend having your own photos over stock photos 100%. So the next piece of the puzzle is perhaps the most important part of having a really good ad. And this is, I already wrote this ahead of time, so I just can copy and paste it. But this is the ad copy. And guys, the whole point of this is to stop people dead in their track. So there's many different types of ad copy styles and strategies that you guys could do. I mean, one that I've seen a lot of success doing is calling out the people within your hometown. So let's say you live in Houston, Texas. You could say, hey, homeowners of Houston, Texas, or, you know, Hey, homeowners of where such and such, you know, it's, it's your house dirty, but you can't seem to find the time to, you know, schedule a good cleaning or whatever. In this case, I'm keeping it a little bit more broad. Oh, the joy of a sparkling clean floor. Unfortunately, many homeowners are victims of dirty floors and carpets almost year round. So what I did with this sentence is I'm sort of touching up on the pain points of what this individual is most likely going to resonate with, because the truth is most people just don't clean their homes. Is this sounds like Lou, you are in luck. So this is probably the most important part of the whole paragraph because I'm offering two things. I'm offering a good offer and scarcity. We are offering a free floor cleaning to the first 10 people that claim this deal. So the free floor cleaning, that's a great offer. I mean, who wouldn't want to get that? And then the first 10 people that claim this deal. So there's a little bit of scarcity because if people are reading this ad and they say, wait, only 10 people are going to be selected to win this offer. You know, I better act upon this soon before I lose my chance. So you guys, this especially applies if you're reaching out to a cold audience. You know, if this is your first campaign that you're running, you have to understand you're trying to stop these people from what they were doing, what they were browsing already on Facebook and get them to consult you. Because an issue that I see so many house cleaners doing is if they are running ads like this, it will just be something boring. Like, hey, we're a sparkling clean company located in, you know, whatever, Dallas, Texas. Here's our number or whatever. Give us a call. We'll give you a free estimate. It's like, no, these people don't know who you are. They have no reason to console you. There's nothing redeeming about that offer. You guys have to understand that, yes, even though a free floor cleaning, you might be losing a little bit of value. Let's say it's, you know, $35 worth of value that you guys are losing right away. Once you're in that home, Yes, let's say 10 people interact with this ad. Yes, maybe three of them will take advantage of you and they'll be like, okay, I got my free floor cleaning. That was very nice, guys. Um, thanks, see you later. But the other seven people that claim this voucher, they're gonna have you inside their house. They're gonna know what you look like, what you sound like, who your workers are, what type of work you guys do. And so long that you guys do a good job, which I know you will, they'll be like, okay, you know what? This was actually really good. Um, my basement actually does need a cleaning or my kitchen is pretty dirty right now. Can you guys give me a free quote? So this is a really good way just to get past that barrier and establish rapport with your potential clients, because then at that point, it's just your job to sell them of why they should continue with your service. So that's a little trick of how to create an ad that converts. Now the headline and description and display link, actually don't worry about the display link, but the headline and the description are these little bodies of text that are going to appear right here. So you could write something like five star rated house cleaning in Dallas, Texas. And guys like obviously make it somewhat believable or somewhat realistic because 
if your average Google rating is two stars and you write this, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. You just don't want to lie to your potential customers. But that's just a little chance for you guys to upsell your service a little bit. And then description. I like to just reassure what people should do once they land on the ad. So click here to claim your voucher. Okay. So, so we had in the ad copy, click get offer. So you can actually change the button to what it says. So we're going to change that to get offer. And now we're pretty much done with the ad. Now you can scroll down here and you could select to either have a messenger bot automatically pop up, which you've probably seen in the past. You know, this company, I haven't set one up for them yet, but I think they will want one in the near future. But it's basically just a chat bot that pops up in the bottom right and it will say something like, hey, how can we help you today? And based on which button you click on, there will be uh, pre-selected screening questions that lead you to um, you know, different answers and, and options that they can give you on how to basically schedule an estimate with them. So that would be an option if you had the chatbot installed. But in this case, we're just gonna use Instant Form and click Create New Form. And this is gonna bring up a little lead ad form uh, right on their screen right away. So this is really convenient. More volume and higher tent. Don't worry too much about this right now. Uh, just keep it at more volume. Headline, you could sort of just reassure what you said in the ad. So far, I've star rated house cleaning in Dallas, Texas. I would recommend using the same image of your ad just to keep everything congruent with each other. So the different layout that you guys can use, you could have a paragraph layout or uh, bullets, for example. And this is where you can really just brag about why they need your service. So reduction in allergens, let's say. Um, reduced chances of floor scratches. So based on whatever service you guys are offering, you just wanna basically list the bullet points and reassure why they need to consult you guys right away for the service. Then there's gonna be um, uh, qualifying questions so I like to capture their full name, their email, and I like click add new question, go to contact fields, and I like to get their phone number as well. And I, guys, just leave it at three questions, for example. Um, this is really all you need. You don't need to get their like country zip code um, because the thing is, the more questions you guys ask them, the more likely they are to sort of see it as a higher barrier of entry and just click exit out of the ad. So you only wanna have a couple questions, but the nice thing about this is Facebook already has this information for each individual pre-populated. So they don't really have to do anything. It automatically fills out. They just have to really click submit. Um, so there's gonna be a privacy policy. Just enter for a link text privacy policy. And guys, don't freak out. If you don't have a website or you don't have a website with a privacy policy, I'm gonna post a generator link uh, in the description of this video. And what you guys can do is basically just plug in the name of your company and it will generate a free privacy policy page. All you have to do is copy and paste the whole text of that page, go onto your Facebook page, create a new post, paste that whole, uh, that whole body of text in, and then once that is pasted, you're gonna have a new post. Just open up that post in the new window, copy and paste the URL, and guys, you can paste that right here, and it will basically uh, claim it as you know, a privacy policy page. So that's a little, trip, uh, a little trick to get away around it. So that's that. And then here's your thank you screen. So this is also really important, guys, because once you're here, what you ideally want to do is you want to have these leads contact you. It's not going to happen 100% of the time. I can't even guarantee it's going to happen 50% of the time. But the reason why you want to try and advise this is because if this isn't the case, then you're going to have to chase these leads one by one, which is doable. You know, I have done that for some of my clients and it's, it's fine. It's doable. But it's just more convenient if you get the lead to call your business owner right away. So what you can do is have a little bit of an upsell and say something like, but well, wait, call in the next 15 minutes and we will supply you with a $25 gift, Oops. gift card. Call while supplies still I can't type today guys 
So this is another little scarcity thing, but it's really just to incentivize people to call your business right away. And um, something you can do as well is change the button type here to call business, link your phone number. So all people have to do is click that, that phone um, icon and it will call you guys right away. So that's a good way to get the leads to, ch to contact you. Now, once you have that completed, you're basically all set. Just click save and finish. I'm not gonna save this, but you're gonna click save and finish. <clears throat> and then you're gonna have that lead form you just created uh, hooked up to your ad right now. So now you're pretty much done. Hit confirm. And now your ad is gonna be published or it's gonna be upon review where the Facebook team basically goes and dissects your ad make sure everything you know follows their their policy and everything and then it's going to publish it live and start showing to your potential prospects so i'm just going to delete this real quick um because obviously i'm not trying to publish this ad but once you guys have that set up what you have to understand is over in these columns people are going to be interacting with your ad you know you're going to say uh you're going to see who's who's clicking on your ad um stuff like that and how you guys know if you're getting leads or not, what I would absolutely recommend is hooking up something like Zapier to your campaign and making it so that every time you get a new lead within Facebook, these lead ad forms, the, the new lead actually gets sent as a text message to your phone. You can make it so it's sent as a new email. You can make it so it's sent as a new row updated in your Google spreadsheet. And you could be notified of every single one of these. Unfortunately, Facebook doesn't really have a feature like that built in within uh, their their lead form, which is kind of unfortunate. But if you guys want to track these leads, all you're gonna do is go into the publishing tools, go down to where it says forms library, and you're gonna see your lead form over here. I have a bunch for whatever reason. A lot of these are really just duplicates of each other. But once you guys get a new lead uploaded, it will say over here leads count, and you're just gonna click the download button, download new leads, CSV and it's going to download right here and now when you open this up it's going to open it up in Excel or numbers or whatever program you guys want and it's going to have a row with all the new leads that you've got within that day so it will say the first name their last name their email the phone number and now it's your job just to really follow up with them as soon as possible so like I said that option what I just described is if you don't have a program like Zapier um, automatically hooked up to your lead ads but I will make a video in the future to show you how to do that because it just makes everything way more convenient. But nonetheless, this is still a viable method and something I would still recommend you guys do if you're starting out. Just make sure that you go within this publishing tools, forms library, and just check it uh, pretty frequently. You know, I would have the page on and just refresh it every uh, couple hours to make sure you know, you're not missing out on leads. So anyways, guys, uh, that's pretty much it with this video. I hope you got some value and it's understandable so you can start creating your own campaign and getting some more house cleaning appointments. So thanks again for watching. I'll talk to you soon.